Close your eyes, focus on the breath, and try to stay right here. Don't let the mind go wandering off. If it does go wandering off, catch it and bring it right back. As for the thought that goes wandering off, you don't have to follow that. Just let it go wandering away, but you bring your attention right back to the breath, coming in, the breath going out. Try to be true to the breath. If you really want to learn something about it, you have to be true to it. You have to stick with it until you start getting results. If you're not getting results, then look at what you're doing. Figure out, well, maybe I'm not doing this quite right. Change your point of focus. Maybe focusing on the nose isn't comfortable. How about focusing on the chest or on the stomach? You can focus anywhere. What this means is you have to learn how to explore as you're sticking with the breath. This is how you gain knowledge out of it. Not sitting here just doing nothing but looking, 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 but not thinking is not going to get you anywhere. You have to bring some thinking to the breath as well. Yesterday we lost one of the, the great Ajans in the Thai tradition. It was a loss not only for Thailand, but it's a loss for the whole world. Ajahn Mahabua was one of the great teachers. He was one of Ajahn Mun's last students. And so when you think of someone like that passing away, you think about when the, when the Buddha passed away. As he said, the, the devas in that day were trying to pay homage to him with flowers and incense and, and song. But he said that's not the way you pay true homage. You pay true homage to a teacher by practicing the Dharma in accordance with the Dharma. Because after all, you think of the Buddha, all the effort he went to find the Dharma. He didn't do it just to get flowers and incense. He wanted to be a Buddha who actually made a difference in the, in the lives of the people of the world, teaching them the way to find true happiness within themselves. And so with a great teacher like Ajahn Mahabhava, it's, it's the same principle holds. We want to pay homage to him. You practice the Dharma as he taught it, because he taught the Dharma in line with the Dharma. He didn't say, well, now that we're in, in the modern world, we have to change things this way and change things that way. He kept with the same the original principles. He was true to those original principles, and he taught us how to be true to those original principles and find true happiness ourselves. So this is how we create a refuge for ourselves. If we hope to depend on other people, as we see, even great people have to pass away. And as the Buddha himself said toward the end of his life, is make yourself an island. Learn how to develop your own mindfulness, make it solid, make it strong, so you can become a basis for your own discernment to arise. In other words, you have to learn how to train the good qualities in your mind, the qualities in your mind that help you see and understand and practice the Dharma and attain results in the Dharma. That's how you create a refuge for yourself. If you hope to depend on other people all the time, there's going to be a letdown. Either the person is not reliable, or even the most reliable person in the world can still die. So the Buddha said, turn around and focus on your breath, focus on the body in and of itself. Make this a good foundation for the mind so that whatever comes up in the mind, you can see it for what it is, whether it's skillful and whether it's not. That's your defense. That's your protection. That discernment that can see, oh, when something comes in the mind, you can't follow it. Or if this thing comes up in the mind, it's something that's worth following. Because no matter how powerful someone else may be, they can't protect you from your own mind. You're the only one who can provide that protection by developing the good qualities that are also that, that are there in the mind as well. So take this principle to heart that we practice the Dharma in line with the Dharma, both as a means of homage to the great people who've gone before us and as a way of developing our own refuge to keep the Dharma alive, not only for ourselves, but also as a gift to the people who come behind us. Because if we keep changing things, there's going to be nothing left. If we hold to the true principles, we benefit and the people who come after us see our example, and they get a chance to benefit as well. So try to develop this refuge inside, both as means of providing for your own true happiness, as a means of providing a good example for others, and as homage to the great people who have taught us. And that way we serve all people, past, present, and future, in the proper way.